Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Memphis Dynasty here on NCAA 12, one of the underrated NCAA games that we do end up having. We're 2 0 after a pretty impressive non conference slate, but even though this is going to be our least difficult game on the non conference schedule, at least I think that's the case. That being said, though, still playing against a very good football team from the SEC. We're taking on the Vanderbilt Commodores. The Vanderbilt, you know, yes, they don't have a winning record right now, but they are better than us on paper. There are Bs across the board, whereas we're C pluses across the board. But Kurt Herstreet, unlike the first couple of games that we ended up playing, well, he's actually going to put a little bit of faith in us and actually is choosing us to win this game. So. Really excited about this game. Looking forward to that opportunity to get to 3-0 here on this young season. We'll see that we can make that happen in your number six. So hope you guys are excited for this episode. And if you are, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do have to be brand new to the channel. I'll catch you guys on the field for the start of this ball game. Let's go get it, fellas. Alright boys, so we'll come out onto the field with our offense to get things going. And looks like Vanderbilt doesn't have very many people in the box. So we're going to run the ball up the middle with Jace Mitchell. Jace Mitchell doing a great job running the football to start this game. He actually nearly picks up the first down as he will be replacing the injured Andre Fletcher. But then on this third and inches, we need less than a yard to pick up the first down. But not only do we do not get it... But we also coughed the football up just simply unacceptable. We cannot turn the football over like that. But that's exactly what we just did. And now our defense is going to be put in a very compromising position. First and 10 for the Vanderbilt Commodores. They'll drop back to pass. Going to look downfield. Has a lot of time to work with. But it's almost intercepted. I'm actually surprised that Dan Daniel was not able to complete that catch. But it'll be second and ten instead as Vanderbilt will drop back. Look over the middle of the field and find their receiver. First down for the Commodores. And now they will have themselves the very first red zone opportunity of this young ball game here. So we'll see if our defense can wisen up and hold them to a field goal. We do uh, stop that halfback screen. Definitely disrupted the timing of that play but we're going to need a couple more of those times of stops a couple plays later second and 20 they were given a holding penalty trying to go deep downfield Vance nearly intercepted and Davis had his hands on the ball but could not bring it in and it now makes it third and 20 we'll see what our team can do on a third and 20 just got to keep him out of the end zone essentially but our safety gets beat the safety had one job. Don't let anybody get past you. And what does he do on a third and 20? He lets them go right by him. Just terrible coverage there. And that was even me playing user, right? Like, I was supposed to guard the middle of the field. That's not my fault. So it's 7-0 in favor of Vanderbilt now. As we'll look to try and answer back. But they were actually uh, all over that halfback screen. Uh, 96 there doing a great job. Just uh, kind of staying in front of that pass because, you know, Jace Mitchell had a lot of space to work with on the perimeter. Like he does now, he'll get across midfield, and that is our biggest play of the game so far. But we will run into a third and nine. Thompson's going to drop back the pass. He's going to look for somewhere to throw the ball to. Looks over to run inside, and Luke McConnell, he's going to hang on to the ball. First down for the Memphis Tigers. As they did not have enough bodies to cover that route ultimately. 
sets this up with a goal line opportunity which Joseph Thompson is gonna go ahead and finish up you love to see it it's all knotted up now at seven apiece so now Vanderbilt's team comes out onto the field here for uh, their next drive they were able to drive down the length of the field last time out as you know we gave up third and 20 on that last drive I'm still a little bitter about that I'm not gonna lie to you guys but we'll see if our defense can play a little bit better as they throw over to the right inside and that's almost a drive killer oh you gotta bring that in there cool beans you can't drop a pass like that but instead a second and ten with Vanderbilt remaining alive looking over to that left hand side and that's also going to be deflected away third and ten now coming up for the Vanderbilt as they've been decent on third down we'll send the blitz to try to speed up this quarterback up a little bit scales almost got to him but finds his quarter receiver in the nick of time and it almost ends up being a touchdown it was going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and we got brutalized on the outside unfortunately so now Vanderbilt trying to score on this first and goal and they will do exactly that the Commodores will pull back ahead midway through the first quarter of action up by seven so we end up going free and out on our next possession but thanks to what we were able to do uh, with our punter Tommy Wyatt he was able to at least pin them deep so hopefully this gives our uh, defense a little bit of confidence because they have uh, not been having that great of a game uh, early on so far it has been a struggle However, Vanderbilt's going to throw over to the left-hand side. you got to bring that pass down. Uh, Gentry could have possibly had a pick six if he brought it in. Drops that pass, unfortunately. And now it's second and ten. Looking over the middle of the field. That's caught for a first down. This Vanderbilt team is certainly, they are on the move. Right now, they are on their game today here in Nashville, Tennessee. Another first down for the Commodores. As they'll look over to the left-hand side. Vance caught, but not for a first down. It is very close to one, though, as they give that a gain of nine on the play. It's now second and one coming up. Going to be a run over to the left-hand side. And they actually played that pretty well. I thought we played that pretty well over there on the left-hand side. But they only needed one yard, and, well, that's what they ended up getting. The Commodore mascot, he certainly really likes that. So now we try to pick ourselves back up after giving up yet another first down. This time going back in the air. Plenty of time in the pocket and we might have been stuck with a face mask. Carter thinks that's what the penalty is going to be and he would actually be correct. Chris Gentry gets caught with a face mask penalty. So not only do we almost give up that first down off rip, but we will actually give it to them. Just because we grabbed that face mask, that's an additional 15 yard penalty. So now, second and ten coming up as the Commodores look the score. Yet again, it's a screen pattern over the left-hand side. We did a decent job of reading that, but it still ends up being a five-yard gain. So you hate to see it, and it makes it a much more manageable third and five. Going to only send three people and have eight folks up in coverage. Dropping back. We're going to try to get to his quarterback. We don't get there. And look at that. We're able to make a play in the back end. You love to see it. And that will force their field goal unit to come on out for a 45-yard field goal attempt. But their kicker is actually pretty solid. Not liquid or gas. So he'll sink that right through the middle of the uprights. And Vanderbilt will be going ahead and giving themselves a 10-point lead. This will also go ahead and end that first quarter of action. This has mostly been Vanderbilt's. We knew that it was going to be a challenge going into an SEC environment. And while we were able to beat Alabama at home earlier this year, playing on SEC territory, that's a different story. So now we come on out onto the field for the second quarter of action. We'll pick things up with six and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter as we actually get a turnover uh from our special team so we actually start off pretty close to the end zone we'll at least be in a red zone opportunity so a prime chance to make this just a one score game 
as Thompson's looking around, looking for somebody to get open, but nobody was getting open there, trying to force it to Jody Gentry, and unfortunately does end up being incomplete. So now we're running back with a third and 10. Got to come away with some points here. Third and long. Trying to make some adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Trying to create as much space as possible. And look at this. Chase Mitchell in the open space. He's got numbers and he's going to score. Touchdown Memphis. And the Tigers will pull to a fin just a field goal. So now it's our defense's turn to step up and try to hold it down. Next possession for Vanderbilt's going to start with a passing play. Looking to go deep downfield. He's got a guy. He's going to make a catch. We had two defenders in the vicinity, but neither of them was guarding over the top. And unfortunately, this quarterback, he's feeling himself today. Gray, he's number one for Vanderbilt. He's feeling himself as he's going to set up yet another screen. That could almost go for a first down, but we do hold them. Could be another field goal attempt on the way, but no. Vanderbilt's going to send out their offense for a critical. Fourth and two. Squ dropping back. Gray looks to the left hand side, and this guy's going to make the catch just barely in bounds. But it set resets to downs for the Commodores. As they want to build this lead back up to a two-score game as we almost had the interception the other way. Another dropped interception. We keep bailing them out right now. As it's third and long. Gray dropping back again. Facing a little bit of pressure. Looks over the middle and it's going to be deflected away. Trying to fit that in. But there was just nowhere really to go with it there. And again, the Commodores will send the field goal unit out for this field goal attempt. It's up, and it will be good. 20-14 to 14 is going to be your score. So here we go. Next drive for the Commodores as we did end up going free and out on our next possession. And so with less than two minutes left to play in the first half, we're going to get caught for an offsides. And they won't even need the offsides penalty. They will pick up this first down anyways. Although the refs still got to go and do their job. TJ Cannon was caught offsides. So one minute left to play here in the first half. Commodore still got a timeout left to work with. As our defense again gives up yet another completion. This one for 11 yards. Has got to quickly get on our side of the field. As they're going to move quickly. Third and short. Looking, going over to the right hand side, and there's a miscommunication because that receiver was just not ready for that pass at all. I don't know what he was looking at, to be honest with you, but fourth down, they're going to go for it. Looking for our defense to make a stand. They're going to try to run it, but our rush defense, that's something that has really improved from year number five up to year number six. And the running back got hurt. Brian Long, he's going to be down on the ground. The senior running back, he's not feeling good right now. So 40 seconds left to play in the first half, and it's now our turn to try to get some points on the board. Thompson drops back to pass, looks over the middle of the field, and trying to get that out to Jace Mitchell. Thought that safety was going to cover the boundary a little bit more, but you know, kind of telegraphed that throw a little bit. And now it's second and 10. Thompson trying to set up the screen. Goes over to the right hand side. He's got blocks. Downfield. Mitchell. He's going to be brought down to about the 40 yard line. But a penalty on the field, though. It's a holding against us. They'll call it on Cal Joey. That's going to bring us for a loss of nine, actually, all things considered. So just looking for something to make this more manageable of a third down opportunity. IT Thomas does. Make that happen for us. A nice little 12-yard reception. But third and seven will end up employing a five-wide set. Middle of the field does get open. We find IT Thomas yet again. Now we can be a little bit more aggressive. We got a few shots at the end zone. We're going to try and take them. Five-wide set yet again. Thompson looks around. He's got some time. Throws downfield. He's got a guy. Luke McConnell. And he's going to be dropped at the five-yard line. We end up taking one of our timeouts, trying to be 
a little bit strategic here. We will have a couple of shots at the end zone now. So first and goal for the Memphis Tigers. Only thing that we could stop us from getting into the end zone would be taking a sack. And you know what we end up doing? We take a sack. So we call our last time out. We send our field goal unit out. And at least the field goal is good. But definitely a missed opportunity to take the lead into halftime. Though we are playing some pretty solid football. We're going to be down by three at the half. So now we jump into the second half of action here as we got a tight ball game out here in Nashville, Tennessee. Three point game between these two teams as they'll try to throw over the middle of the field. That's going to be incomplete. We'll see if our defense can make some adjustments. Gave up a lot of explosive plays, I felt like. And that's been their worst game this season from the defensive end, but offense. Has woken up early, and now defense is going to start waking up. Chris Gentry with the INT down the sideline, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Tigers. And for the very first time today, we got the lead. Chris Gentry really using every single inch of that vertical. He's a nice little athlete now. And we will look to take control here in this third quarter as we force Vanderbilt to punt on that next possession. Thompson trying to set up play action. Looks over the middle, but IT Thomas is there. He makes the catch, and it's a first down for the Memphis Tigers. Joseph Thompson looking to get closer. He's almost at 200 yards, having a decent day. Not an efficient day necessarily, but he is moving the ball down the field, giving big 2021 Bengals offensive vibes. We'll see if we can hit another deep play as we'll go for a third and short. Thompson in the shotgun formation. He drops back. He's got a receiver over the middle of the field. It's Chase Mitchell. And nothing wrong with taking that check down when it's a third and short. All we needed to do was pick up that first down, and we certainly accomplished that. So a new set of downs to work with as Roy B. Smidlock comes into the game for the first time today. We haven't called his name yet, but made some most of his opportunities. Gets a 10-yard run for his very first carry of the day. And matter of fact, we're going to try to run the ball with him yet again. See if we can get it out to Roy B. Smidlap. And Smidlap picks up the first down for us. Nice job coming to the game. Uh, not necessarily warmed up. And hey, two carries. He picks up a first down for us. You love to see it. We'll put him back on the sideline, though, as Chase Mitchell comes back into the game. He's more of our bruiser. You can see why he's such a bruiser. Some, most of the time, it's going to need more than one defender to bring him down. And that will be the case as we get into conference play. Since, for the most part, we've been taking on teams that are uh, higher than our caliber, at least on paper. So it's been a little bit more of a challenge, you know, to win these games. That's what's been impressive. But our 2-0 start, we went out and played teams that are really darn good. But now, third and short coming up, trying to pick up the first down with Smidlap, and Smidlap is going to get it. That was a tough first down to pick up. The blocking was a little bit less than ideal there, but we'll still pick up that first down anyways. So now, first and 10 coming up as Thompson drops back. He looks over the middle, tries to get it out to Luke McConnell, but maybe not the best way to... Uh, throw that football and Luke McConnell got hurt too so that does hurt our wide receiver depth a little bit as now second and 10 looking over to the left inside trying to get it out to Jody Gentry but he could not haul it in either so now third and 10 coming up as we get an injury update for Luke McConnell he strained his abdomen he'll be out for the rest of the drive but he will be okay long term third down Thompson Looks over the middle of the field, finds Trayvon Randolph, who makes the catch, but can not. <clears throat> he just has to go at, he fumbles the ball. He fumbles the ball. Like, if he just straight up dropped it initially, it wouldn't have been a, uh, a fumble, it would have been incompletion. But we really uh, left ourselves out to dry there, uh, unfortunately. So, could have extended our lead. We don't do that, but... Our defense does do its job. They hold them up once again. They've really stepped up here in the second half. Have not let them score anything so far as we're trying to get back 
we were trying to get back into this game. But Chase Mitchell looking to get to the outside. He does. Getting chased down by a linebacker. They got some athletic linebackers. They really do. And that's what's made it a little bit difficult. Yes, Chase Mitchell had some big runs. That has happened. But Chase Mitchell really making his presence felt here as he's really uh, getting open here on these passing plays. And that's just more of a awareness of, hey, it's okay to use that, uh, that check down every once in a while. So that's really what's been helping us here in the second half as well. But we will come across yet another third down. This one a third and five, so it's very manageable. Looking over to that left-hand side. They don't have the numbers. Looking around. Thompson looking, trying to escape. He's actually going to escape the pocket. Let's go, baby. Joseph Thompson going to work. And that will end up finishing that third quarter of action. We got a tight one here yet again. 24 to 20 year score. Whoever wins this quarter will win the game. So here we go. Our team comes out onto the field to start the second, fourth quarter of action. Mitchell, he's going to start by running the ball right up the middle. Nearly finds the end zone. He gets caught from behind, though inside the five yard line so we got to reward jace mitchell for that nice run earlier will be a disservice if it gave that touchdown to somebody else and hey mitchell does the job good awareness staying patient and now we got our biggest lead today 31 to 20 your score so now we put vanderbilt on the back foot as we try to close this game out and get to three and zero on the season hopefully we can get ourselves ranked after this game, too, if we end up finishing the deal. Because we, we played two SEC teams and a Big Ten squad at this point. You know, got to put a little respect on our name. We can finish this out. But the job, it is far from finished right now. They'll go ahead and pick up this first down through the air as Andre Gray. He's been picking up a lot of yards through the air. 350 yards today. He's been balling out. As they'll look for another deep play downfield. Looking down the field. And thankfully it's tipped away. Because that receiver had a step. It was a tad under thrown though. So now second and ten coming up. As Vanderbilt drops back. Tries. Matt Scales almost gets to him. Just rolls right in front of the feet of Andre Gray. Before calmly delivering a six yard pass to Gamura Gaver. We'll see if. They go to the air once again. They've been having more success with that than on the ground. Looking over the left-hand side. And our defenders were caught a little bit out of position there. Not really sure what Kevin Fuller was doing. I was hoping he would stay with him a little bit longer in zone coverage. Because there was really nobody else that was going to be in his zone, right? So a little bit of a head-scratcher there. But we do at least get them to get another third and long we'll see if we can get him off the field this time as gray looks over the middle and it's gonna be incomplete it's battered away at the last second nice job by gentry getting that ball loose and now the commodores they'll send their field goal unit this would still make it a one score game the kick is up and it will be good it is laced through so it's a one possession game but if vanderbilt wants to tie it they will need more than just a touchdown. They'll also need that two-point conversion. So here we go. First and ten coming up for the Memphis Tigers. Is going to be looking to ice this game. I think we got, if we can score on this drive, I think we'll be putting ourselves in a good position. But not only score, but what I would love to do as well is take some time off this clock. Make sure that they don't have ample time to complete any sort of comeback. So that's really what we're trying to accomplish. Let's see if we can do exactly that. As the cheerleaders are certainly loving that first down that we are able to pick up. Got a decent section of Memphis fans that have made the trip out to Nashville to uh, uh, watch this non-conference game here early on in the season. As now, that's going to be a second down coming up after a six-yard game by IT. It's Thompson. Drops back to pass. Looks over to right-hand side. He finds Jacoby Johnson. First time we called his name today. We use him to pick up a first down. He's been a decoy all day long. Thompson looking over the middle. This time to Trayvon Randolph, but through behind him. If that was thrown in front of him, that might have been completed, but that was a tough adjustment to make. 
Now, second and 10 coming up as Midlap comes into the game. He'll get the carry on the halfback draw, and it's for a decent set of yards, a five-yard gain on that one. And it opens up the rest of our playbook as we're trying to get Smidlat into open space. He is a speed burner, one of our better athletes. Looking over to the right, left-hand side, Smidlap looking for the first down marker, and he's not going to get it. Actually mark him a couple of yards shy. I actually thought he was a little bit closer to that first down marker than that, but we're going to take the points. We're going to take this opportunity to make this a two-possession game as Tommy Wyatt's going to kick this field goal up. It's in the air, and it's going to be good. The field goal attempt's going to be good. Gives us an 11-point lead. So now, 11-point game between us and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, they're going to have, they have two possessions left in this game. That's what I'm predicting. Well, two, maybe three possessions left. So if we can get a stop on either of these two drives that are coming up, we can win this game and ice it. Here we go now. Second and five coming up, dropping back. We'll get over to the right-hand side, and it's going to just be completed. Had to break out that 10 toes down movement, but it will be considered a completion, and therefore, a first down. Going into a, kind of our similar to a prevent defense, although we get fooled with Martin, because I don't know why Martin does this. He disguises it to where he's playing extremely deep. I don't like him doing that because he gives up too many plays over the middle. And we were just caught with our pants down. We were caught with our pants down, unfortunately. So now Vanderbilt has himself. Well, they officially now have a red zone opportunity because they just gotten yet another first down on us, which I would not be surprised at this point. They go no huddle. They are indeed doing exactly that given they're trying to get down the field as quick as possible, trying to perverse some time, and wow, that's incomplete. I'm actually surprised by that. Thought they would give us a touchdown. We were extremely fortunate that did not go for six. Can't count our blessings too many times, though, because very next play, looking over to the left-hand side. That was almost a dime, but Kevin Fuller broke that one up, and now it's third and ten. We're going to get a third down stop. They have not done well in third down conversions today. Third, three for 14, and that's going to make it three for 15. Avove will provide the forward progress. Just need one singular yard. How will they try to pick up that one yard? Will they try to run it? No, they're going to try to pass. Four of a touchdown, and nobody's there to guard them. We were in a zone, but just a mishap in our zone, unfortunately, and... That will make it a touchdown for the Commodores. I mean, no defender was really even in the pitcher. Like, not only was he open, he was wide but naked open there. So a two-point conversion coming up for Vanderbilt. We do stop the two-point conversion. So if they do get a next another opportunity with the football, they will have to score yet another touchdown. So at least we got that working in our direction, but... We can't run the rest of his time off. We fail in our objective to run the time off the clock. So now Vanderbilt gets one more chance. 138 left to play. Looking for a big play downfield. Almost got it, but it's broken up at the very last moment. You want to talk about living on the edge? We definitely did that. So they now run it back. Second and 10. Looking for another deep shot downfield. Oh, that's nearly intercepted. That could have finished the game off once and for all. But now it's third and ten. Gray in the shotgun. We're going to send the Blitz. Get some pressure in his way. Blitz is picked up pretty well. Third and long. And it's caught. No. It's dropped. It is dropped at the last moment yet again. Andre Gray's receivers, they're selling on him right now. And it comes down to this. Fourth and ten. Dropping back, looking over to left hand side, and it's caught! Vanderbilt now has some life. They're at midfield now. With one timeout left, firing over to left hand side, trying to throw a bullet, but it will be incomplete yet again. And it brings up yet another third and long. Gotta finish the job. Two plays away from doing just that. Vanderbilt 
dropping back. He got all the time in the world. I could make a sandwich with this offensive line protection, but still, the defense holds up in the back end. And we get him to a familiar spot. Another 4th and 10. We're going to finish the job once and for all. Can we do it? 4th and 10. Dropping back. And it's going to be, looks like, looking for the long ball downfield. We got a guy there, but we misplay it. I was holding down uh, Y or triangle, you know, for the PS3 guys. But you, you know what I'm talking about. But we misplayed it completely there. Just completely. I was even trying to bait him. But we misplayed that completely. And that's an L on my part. But they'll go for the two-point conversion. Make this a field goal game. And they will succeed in getting the two-point conversion. So we can't win on a field goal. We can only tie on such. But if we want to win, we will have to score a touchdown. Only 49 seconds left to do it. We got to drive at least to the 35-yard line. That's where we got to go. It doesn't have to be all the way. Last thing that we can avoid, though, don't take any sacks. That's the last thing that we need to do right now. So let's see if our offense has one more great drive left in them. Second and 10. Looks like Vanderbilt intends to send the blitz. They don't. I was sort of. So we'll have time in the pocket, and we get brought down. We have to take a timeout, and this is exactly what I was worried about. Only one timeout left, but that's irrelevant. We got a 4th and 19. It's going to come down to this one play. To remain undefeated on the season. Thompson dropping back. Jody, he's beat his man. He catches it. And now he's down the sideline. Foot race. 20, 10, touchdown. Memphis Tigers. Jody Gentry with possibly the game-winning touchdown. And I've been listening in the comments. So, talking about you gotta give Jody Gentry the ball. I see you, my guy. And we did exactly that to possibly win this game with Vanderbilt. They have one more shot. They will not get the ball downfield. And this was a sweatier end than what I really wanted it to be, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was a really sweaty way to end this game. But we do end up winning the game, none of the less. So 41-37 ends up being the final score. We win yet again. We are still undefeated on this season. And we're going to go 3-0 after winning by a score of 41-37. I mean, look at this, guys. We end up with the number one classic, at least on my 360 console. And rightfully so, because this game, well, it was absolutely insane. But checking out the, the stats for our guys real fast. Joseph Thompson put together a pretty good performance in this one. Well, not the most efficient at 22 for 40, for, but he did throw for 385 yards and two touchdowns, including what ended up being that game-winning score. Meanwhile, on the ground, Chase Mitchell actually almost had 100 yards on the day. He had 96 yards and a touchdown, but did hurt himself. Joseph Thompson also found the end zone as well. He had 12 carries off of 5 yards. Meanwhile, for the receiving room, IT Thomas ends up with 7 catches for 62 yards. And the only person that had 7 catches as well was Chase Mitchell at over 100 yards and a touchdown on the day. However, Jody Gentry, off of just a couple of catches, well, he found the end zone. That was our game-winning score. And Luke McConnell had a pretty good performance as well. As for our defense, well, if I'm going to keep it real with you guys, uh, we need to be bailed out a little bit in this one. Uh, we had some bright spots, but giving up 37 is never fun. Uh, Chase Gentry and Eddie Coolbeans uh, both led the team in solo tackles, so DB's leading the way is not a great sign, but Gabe Martin and Joseph Miner, they had free solo tackles, so just goes to show how many times that Vanderbilt passed the ball and how many plays they managed to get here today. However, with the number of times that they did end up passing the football, we did get a few sacks here today. Chase Gentry was able to get one and a half sacks in this game alongside the other Chase Gentry that does happen to be on this football team as well. There was somebody else that combined for Chase Gentry four and a half sack and it was our senior defensive lineman tj cannon 
However, that being said, we did end up losing the turnover battle, but Chris Gentry got an interception for us, and that also helped make the difference as well as he was able to take that all the way back to the crib, and he was able to get a touchdown off of it. But I think we did also, now that I think about it, I did think we get a forced fumble off of it. Dante Sims, that's our senior linebacker. Yeah, he was actually able to get a forced fumble and a fumble recovery that did also set up one of our offensive drives. But after starting this season, not only with a 3-0 start, we got three wins in a row against Power 5 teams. We finally get some national respect. We entered the top 25 for the very first time this season. We are now ranked number 24 in the entire country thanks to essentially our walk-off win against Vanderbilt. But now we get into the more important parts of our season. We go into conference play and we open up conference action against a former Conference USA opponent. We're going to be taking on the Eastern Carolina Pirates in the next episode, Narrow Solid Squad. So they will test us as we go on the road once again. Should be a fun one, so I hope you guys are excited for that. But if you enjoyed this video, I need you guys to do me a couple of favors for me. I need you to go ahead and smack that like button for me. If you're brand new to the channel and you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button so that we can continue to grow this college sports gaming community. But with that being said, this is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. Hoping you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.